Hi everybody, it's Paul Harris with Global Recruiters of Blackhawk here in sunny California. How are you doing? I hope you're doing well. As you may know, I run an executive search firm that specializes in the telecom infrastructure space. Last week was IWCE in uh, uh, Orlando, Florida. And in case you were not there, I want to just try to give you in the next few minutes just kind of some quick key points of kind of what happened and what was talked about. So IWCE, right? So International Wireless Communication Expo, Orlando, Florida. There's about 7,000 attendees. Uh, there was about 400 exhibitors, almost 400 speakers, and people from 54 different countries. So this is traditionally a, as you as you know, right, a very public safety focused show. So public safety, government, military, utilities, um, enterprise, transportation, etc. So obviously, with it being very um, focused on the public sector. A lot of talk from from the FirstNet folks and about FirstNet. So Mike Poth from FirstNet, the CEO, was there, and he talked about basically kind of one year later, right? So after they uh, inked the deal with AT and T, kind of what's been happening since then. And obviously, the first year was spent getting the 56 states and territories on board with FirstNet, which, by the way. Congratulations to them, phenomenal job on getting all of them on board. And now it's kind of time to switch from the planning stage into the actual doing stage. Um, so Dave Buchanan from FirstNet also talked about not only they want to get the you know, wanted to get the 56 territories and states on board, but they're trying to get the 60,000 public safety agencies on board as customers. And there was talk about instead of building a network from scratch and being limited to the spectrum that was allocated by the by the government as part of FirstNet, how AT&T is opening up the entire network and spectrum holdings um, for prioritization and preemption, preemption uh, services for first responders. So good stuff. And how AT&T obviously plans to use the band 14 for a third of their cell sites just this year. So good stuff regarding FirstNet. A lot of talk about wireless convergence, right? All this kind of stuff coming together, meshing together, so, so to speak, and uh, how they kind of all overlap. So Trey Zimmerman from a company called Ubiquia, it's basically a small cell company, talked about carriers using densification uh, in the urban networks for obviously getting ready for 5G and then talk about, you know, you've read about this, right? So the carriers and the utilities um, are kind of, uh, and and the um, governments, etc. they are banging heads, kind of blaming each other for why the small cell deployments and whatnot are taking so long and how the uh, things need to change from who's at blame to hey we all want the same thing we everybody wants uh, ubiquitous coverage etc so a lot of talk about that uh, Justin Blair from Verizon said the smart city deployments including a lot of the virtualization of the network will um, lead to additional revenue for cities you know kind of the monetization of the network so to speak and how Verizon is moving towards kind of more remote uh, radio heads for indoor and outdoor coverage versus just using the traditional macro system to uh, for indoor penetration so anyways you guys last time i did a review was on uh, mobile World congress and it went too long so <laughs> i'm going to try to truncate this a little bit hope that hopefully that was helpful uh, next for me i've got a lot of smart cities and iot stuff coming up so i'll be happy to report from those after uh, after those trade shows so thanks everybody and have a great day